Item number SCP-5133, Security Level 1, Containment Class Safe, Disruption Class Dark, Risk Class Notice. Special Containment Procedures A small greenhouse with semi-opaque glass paneling has been constructed near SCP-5133. The greenhouse is to be equipped with standard living amenities to accommodate a part-time Foundation handler and stocked with necessary sanitary supplies. Access to the greenhouse requires permission from the current project director and level 2 clearance. SCP-5133 is to be checked every four hours for the presence of new SCP-5133-1 instances. All instances of SCP-5133-1 that leave the immediate vicinity of the pond are to be captured and stored in standard wildlife observation containers within the greenhouse. Any further care of the pond and frogs can be entrusted to SCP-5133-2. SCP-5133-2 is considered contained on site while inhabiting its current residence and is under Foundation Protective Custody. The part-time handler assigned to SCP-5133-2 is to interview it once weekly about the new development within SCP-5133. If questioned by civilians, the cover story to be provided is that the Foundation handler is the part-time personal caretaker of SCP-5133-2 due to its advanced age. Description SCP-5133 is a small pond approximately 4.5 square meters in surface area and 1.9 meters deep at the lowest point. SCP-5133's primary anomaly is the production of SCP-5133-1. SCP-5133-1 appears to be southern brown tree frogs. However, the flesh of an SCP-5133-1 instance beneath the skin consists exclusively of varying types of fruit. Types of fruit within SCP-5133-1 entities exhibit no pan, save for the commonality of the fruit originating from tropical climate. Chemical analysis has determined that these fruits contain upwards of three times the amount of vitamins typically found in the non-anomalous variants. Upon consumption of SCP-5133-1 fruit, subjects report that SCP-5133-1 tastes much better than a regular fruit of the same type and that fruit from SCP-5133-1 instances deceased due to old age are the tastiest. SCP-5133-1 appeared to voluntarily remain within 3 meters of SCP-5133, but will not resist when picked up or lured away. The frogs are extremely docile and show no signs of behavioral changes when harmed. Instances of SCP-5133-1 act as regular southern brown tree frogs in the natural environment, even when removed from SCP-5133. Instances of SCP-5133-1 will regularly prey upon insects commonly eaten by southern brown tree frogs, if available. However, the frogs do not appear to require any sustenance to remain active. SCP-5133-1 will nonetheless age at the same rate as the non-anomalous counterparts. It has been noted that infrequently, SCP-5133-1 will emit vocalizations similar to the sound of a middle-aged female human humming. Addendum 5133-A SCP-5133 was originally brought to Foundation attention after an undercover field agent assigned to a local police station intercepted an unusual call requesting animal control assistance. The caller had reported a pond full of frogs with fruit for meat and alleged that the owner of the pond was scamming the town's weekly farmer's market with unethically sourced fake gourmet produce that looks like fruit, but is actually dirty frogs. Foundation personnel later interviewed and amnesticized the caller. 
and subsequently went to investigate SCP-5133. The owner of SCP-5133 designated SCP-5133-2 as an elderly Vietnamese man known solely by his surname, Noi. SCP-5133-2, when questioned about the frogs, simply stated that the pond existed as a joint project between him and his favorite granddaughter, who wanted him to have some form of reliable income. According to local townsfolk, for the past decade, Mr. Noring had been known for his intricate food arrangements, which he sold for high prices at farmers' markets and fairs. The personnel interviewing SCP-5133-2 offered a trade for further compliance. The Foundation would provide caretaking services for SCP-5133-2 and the SCP-5133-1 instances, as well as help keep SCP-5133 out of the immediate public eye. SCP-5133-2 agreed to the exchange, provided that he was still permitted to sell his fruit arrangement at the weekly farmer's market. Below is an excerpt from the first formal interview of SCP-5133-2 conducted by Foundation staff. The veracity of scp 5133 2 statements has yet to be investigated. Interviewed SCP-5133-2 Interviewer Dr. W. Baxter Forward Interview conducted shortly after construction on the SCP-5133 adjacent greenhouse began. SCP-5133-2 and Dr. Baxter are seated on the front porch of SCP-5133-2's residence. SCP-5133-2 is using a small knife to cut decorative shapes out of SCP-5133-1 fruit to assemble into a flower-shaped fruit arrangement. It is noted that the interview takes place during late evening, with the only light present being from Dr. Baxter's tablet screen and fireflies near SCP-5133. SCP-5133-2's vision does not seem negatively impacted by this. Hello, Mr. Noring. Will you please do your best to explain what SCP-5133 is and how it was created? Well, to be very upfront with it, my granddaughter is a fairy. She had to reincarnate three times to get there. Believe it or not, however you want. A fairy granddaughter? regardless of if I believe you or not. Why would she create SCP-5133? We made the pond to celebrate. Well, she celebrated. She shed her furry magic into the pond so she could become human again. Shed away her power, just like an apple blossom sheds its petals. I suppose when you come back from the dead three times for a human, it is because you want to be together with them, even though they live less times than an apple. Regarding that, can you tell me why SCP-5133-1 is made out of fruit? Do you and your granddaughter have some kind of connection to that? Yes, she was an apple once. I was once an apple too, and frogs. Many good frog lives I had. So you claim to be a fairy as well. If that's true, then why are you here and not with your granddaughter? I do not want to give up being a fairy after so many times returning. Or maybe I was scared of never coming back again after one last life. However you want to think of it, she is happy with her human husband, happy to be near the end of her life. When she is near the end of his, and what else is a grandfather to do if his favorite granddaughter is happy? I'll appear to be close to her, but far from others, so I can manage. Can we arrange a meeting with your granddaughter? We would also like to ask her a few questions. My granddaughter is someone you must earn the privilege to meet. She may no longer be of the fairy court, but I am still her grandfather. 
And though you have proven to be less conniving than my daughter-in-law and her hateful spawn, I do not trust you with more secrets now. You may know of our frogs, but no more. You do not seem to be fond of your daughter-in-law. Why is that? Sometimes you do not reincarnate because of a peaceful death. Sometimes a family member kills you. Sometimes they are jealous enough to kill you multiple times because they want you gone multiple times. Believe it or not, however you want. Wouldn't your daughter-in-law be your granddaughter's mother? My daughter-in-law is my only son's second wife. I do not consider her part of our family or our court. A stepmother that we would step away from as much as possible. May her cruel gut boil in a hole for eternity. Is that why you ended up living in such a rural area? We too, granddaughter and myself, we left. Crowded court life. Crowded family life. No more of it. I am here with my frogs to forget what I disliked of the world, and be reminded of my granddaughter, though she is not here, and I will be here for long after, with what is left of her. Perhaps one day, one of her frogs will not be a fruit, but a fairy. Thank you for answering my questions, Mr. Noy. Is there anything else you wish to discuss? I suppose it is you I must thank for taking my words and not losing them to evil ears. And I must ask you for one thing more. We are here to help, Mr. Noyne. Humans notice when an old man can carve food for years, not age a day or tremble in his hands. Will you help me hide away, make some excuses for me, when I must falsify retirement? I think you would find the foundation to be rather experienced in that department. No one other than us will be aware of your true nature, Mr. Noyne. Could you also obtain a small space heater? I would like one of those for my feet in the winter, however you want. Certainly, I will put in a request after this interview. Addendum 5133B, as of February 12th, 2008, SCP-5133-2 has agreed to sell specimens of SCP-5133-1 to the Foundation in exchange for regular deliveries of groceries. The project director approved the arrangement and appended the agreement that the Foundation provide utilities payment for SCP-5133-2's dwelling in exchange for food arrangements crafted by SCP-5133-2. As these arrangements are non-anomalous, they may be provided for staff gatherings per director discretion. Up to this point, Foundation personnel have never witnessed SCP-5133-2 being visited by his granddaughter. SCP-5133-2, when prompted, simply states that he is patiently waiting with the frogs, hoping someday she may return.